Welcome to Circuit Analysis. I'm Jesse, and this is a closer look at ORCAD Capture 17.4. In this video, we're going to go over making a new project, setting up the page, navigating around the page, some of the common hotkeys, draw an example of a common emitter amplifier, check out the properties editor, check out importing old schematics into the current version, how to print to a PDF, some of the common folders in the installation directory, the built-in command window and tickle scripts, and how to download third-party apps. So here we are in Capture. To create a new project, you can go File, New, Project. And I'm going to just create a folder in my C drive. So I'm going to put it here, ORCAD, Projects, Capture. And I'm going to call this one Intro. And We'll enable spy simulations. Probably not going to use it, but maybe we'll use it later. We're going to create it based on an existing project. Eh, nah, we're just going to create a blank project. So here we have our new project. And you can see in the folder that we also have some files. And this here is kind of a tree view of the folder. Some of these are actual files, like this design file intro.dsn, and then some of these are more like virtual files and folders. So the first thing we want to do is set up the size of our schematic. So to do that, we go to Options and Schematic Page Properties. Now this here, you can put in a custom dimension in inches or millimeters but I usually just use the standard ones. So if you're going to draw something a little bigger, we could choose a B size, and you can see that makes it larger. Now to navigate around the page, there's uh, the scroll wheel gets you up and down, and then left and right you hold shift and you scroll, and then to zoom in you do control plus scroll. So you want to keep your left hand on shift and control. So we can go control, scroll, and we'll zoom in, and then shift and scroll. We'll go left and right. To be effective at laying out your schematic, you should memorize these six main shortcuts. So P is for placing a part, R is for rotating a part, W is for drawing a wire, N is for naming a net, T is for placing text, and the delete key is to delete the selected parts. To start drawing our amplifier, we're going to want to place some parts. So we'll hit P to bring up this parts placement editor. Here you'll see the libraries that you currently have listed. Uh, to add new libraries, you click this little plus. This shows you the directory here of libraries. You can check. Notice we're in the PSpice folder, so you can go up a level. Here's all the libraries, but a lot of these, uh, none of these have PSpice models except the ones in the PSpice folder. So we'll use those just in case we want to do a simulation later. So there's a couple standard libraries here that you'll want to find. First one is called Analog. So we can load that. That one has a lot of basic parts, just resistors and capacitors and stuff like that. The next one, you can click on these and like I'll hit B to search for the B ones. Breakout here is the other one. So Breakout has some real simple models of things like transistors that we're going to want to use. So first let's place four resistors. We can go to the analog library and find the R. So we double click the R. Now Right now, before we place it, we can see the outline, and if you hit the R key, it will rotate it. So if we want to do vertically like this, we can place four resistors, and then we can hit Escape and click. Now nothing's selected. Now we can do the breakout library, and we can look for, I think it's Q break. Yeah, here we go. Q break in is the NPN transistor. So we can put that one here. Now I want to zoom in, so I'm going to hold control and scroll wheel. And 
And to connect all these with wires, we can line them up on the grid here and then hit the W key to switch to the wire tool. And you'll see the little crosshair there. So now you can click on these little boxes that represent the nodes of the part. And then you can also click to make a corner. The other thing you can do is you can just click and hold down your left key and you can release it once you get to the next box. So I'm click, 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 hold, release. Now there is a shortcut for doing piecewise components if you don't want to go through this parts library. You can just click on place piece by component and then here's some of the items here if you click like resistor here you get a resistor and it's the same as that one in the analog folder uh, and then these other ones here discrete npn you can see that's the exact same one q break in so we can use this one to find the ground, so we can do P spice ground. Put that one down here, W, escape, W, connect that, escape to unselect everything. And now you can move all of these little reference designators around just by clicking and holding and dragging them. So we can line everything up. It looks a little better. To change the reference designators, you can just double click on them and then change it to R10, for example, or the parts value, same thing, 200. And also, if you don't want to see something like this, you can just click it and hit the delete key and it'll go away. And then uh, if you want to bring it back, you can go into the properties editor by double clicking the part. And then you have to right click on it. If you see this, you might want to hit this pivot button if it looks like this. Um, and then you can select the item here. Value is the one that we hid. And you right click and you go to display. And then you can say show name and value or just the value is how it was before. And then you close that. Now it's back. A couple other shortcuts I use that I didn't mention before are H and V. You can use those. H flips horizontally and V flips vertically. So those are kind of useful. You can also use R to rotate after a part's been placed. So to name our nets, we hit the N key and that brings up this net alias box. So I can call this one like VCC. Put that at the top. You can see if you put your cursor over a net, it'll pop up and it'll say what the name is. So this one's just named zero because it's the ground. Now this one is named VCC. And this one here is just a random number with an N in front of it. So it'll just, if you don't give it a name, it'll just be N and then some kind of number. So right now we can hit N again and we call this like Q1, maybe like, B or something like that. And if we do that, now you can see when you put your cursor over it, the name has been changed to that. If you want to add just some notes to it, you can press T. That brings up a text box and you can say like common emitter amplifier. And this you can just place somewhere you know, just to have a note. Uh, this one, if you want to make new lines, you can. Uh, you have to hold down control and hit enter. And that'll give you a new line. Remember to save your schematic often with control S. So let's go into the property editor a little bit more here. Let's say we have these four resistors and we want to change 
some properties on all of them at once. So we can do control and select them all. And then we can just hit enter. That'll take us into the property editor and you'll see there's a column for each one. Of course, we can pivot that if we want to look at it differently. And now you'll also notice this filter by drop down here, which lets you switch between different uh, views of which properties you're looking at. So let's say we wanted to add a tolerance property. Well, we could just do new property and type tolerance in here, but there is one built in. If we drop down, we can go to the pspice tab and we'll see there's a tolerance property already here, but it has nothing in it. So we could just click on here and type in 1%, enter, and now you see it has one. Now if we want to not have to type that again, we can use the left arrow key to move, you can move the arrow keys to move around in here, and then control C to copy that, and then move to the right with the arrow, and control V, right, control V, right, control V. So you can copy and paste. You can also click and drag to select, and then control V to paste a bunch of things. Now it doesn't always show you properties, so let's say we did this 1% and we forgot, we're on this capture view, we want to make a tolerance property. So if you lost it, you can do new property and then you can type tolerance. And look, as soon as you type tolerance, it pops up with a value. So before I put the E, there's no value. When I put the E, there's a value. So when you see that, you know that this property is already created. You can still click apply and you can do OK. Here it asks you if you want it to be visible or not. So you can select those. Now you'll notice that it popped up in this view because you created it even though it was already created. Anyway, if you want to see that on the schematic, you can select the whole row here by left clicking on this tolerance property and right clicking and clicking on display. And then you can say if you want to display just the value or the name and the value. We'll do the name and the value. Now if you go back to the schematic, you'll see tolerance 1%. So maybe that is just kind of uh, large. Maybe we don't need the tolerance. So you can select all of these resistors. Hit enter again. And then we can just display the value. And now it just says 1%. So what do you do if you have a whole bunch of parts and you don't want to control click on all of them? Then you can do control F for find and you can search for the parts. So here you can put like R star would be anything that begins with an R, star being the wild card, anything after the R. So you click find and that finds all the resistors. You can click on the top one, you can do that with like capacitors, C star, or something like that. And you can hold shift and you can click on the bottom to select them all. And then you right click, edit properties. That brings up this properties editor. It's kind of the same, but slightly different. And find the values column here, for example. You can click on there. If you want to change them all to 200, you can type 200. You can move around with the arrow keys as well. Do control C, control V to paste the values. Now let's look at some common properties. So these are probably the most common ones that I use the value of the part, of course, and the reference designator, the footprint property that links it to a footprint for the PCB layout. The pSpice template is the main property that defines which pSpice is going to be linked to this symbol. And then that uses other properties. So you can link uh, the value is linked through the pSpice template and the reference designator, and then you can put custom properties too. And we'll talk about that in future videos about how to set up a pSpice template and define your pSpice. And then you can create custom parameters, and you would do that 
for example, uh, to add to your bill of materials like part numbers and links to data sheets and stuff like that. And then custom parameters to add things to your pSpice template to inject into the pSpice code. And just notes if you want to display notes by the parts or if you get really into it, you can create custom tickle scripts that look up the custom properties and manipulate things based on that. So if we look in here, some of these properties, you can see here we have the P spice, we have the value here, the reference here. You can click on here and drag this out to see it better. Here's the pSpice template. It's real long. You can see it uses these at signs to pull other parameters in, like TC1 for the temperature coefficient, the value property, and uh, the reference designator and the tolerance and all those things. And that defines how it builds the pSpice code. So if you have any old files that you want to import into ORCID 17.4, it's probably like for, you know, really old ones like version 8 or 9 and that kind of stuff. This is my procedure here. First, you want to remove any special characters from the old file names. The main one I've had problems with is dashes. Um, they'll cause weird errors when you're importing it and it takes a long time to figure it out. So just make sure it's regular, just characters and numbers. And then you go to File, Import, PSpice. One thing is some old files, the old pSpice didn't have a pi parameter, so if you're using pi in any equations, um, you want to go ahead and delete your definition of pi because it has a built-in definition of pi now. Then to delete any of the weird um, design rule marks that come up all over the schematic, you'll go to PCB design rule check. I'll show you that real quick. Then you have to manually remake any subcircuits, and then you have to relink any libraries that you have to your pSpice simulation profile. So for the design rule check thing, if you end up with an imported schematic that just has errors and stars and junk all over it, you go to PCB design rule check, and then here you just click on delete DRC markers, and then you hit run, and that'll get rid of all of those. So to relink your pSpice libraries, you would need a simulation profile. I'll just make one real quick here. Then you'll go into that, go into configuration files and library. And then here you can browse and select your libraries and then click I do add to design usually. So real quick, I'll just show you my procedure for printing a PDF because it's a little tricky. So my notes are, first you want to go to print setup. And when you're in here, you can do Microsoft print to PDF. And then you want to select size A3, I think works pretty well for me and landscape. Okay, now that that's done, you want to select the design file. So selecting the design file before you do print allows you to print all the pages at once. We only have one page, but here you go file print. And since we selected the design file, these options at the bottom are available now. So we're going to do scaling one. And then we have this offset. We want to check both of these horizontally and vertically. And then we have 600 dpi and include pages outside of the hierarchy and include reference pages. So when this is all done, you hit OK and it asks where you want to save the file. We'll just call this test and then it generates the PDF. So I'll just quickly point out a few notable folders in the install directory. So we're in C cadence SPB 17.4 and then this tools folder has some interesting stuff. For the examples, we can go to pSpice, concept samples, and design examples. And here's some pSpice projects you can check out.
also if you go back to tools then you can go to capture and library and this is where all the library files are this is the pspice folder here and then for the tickle scripts you can go to capture and tickle scripts and this is all the built-in tickle scripts here so this is where you'll add custom ones if you wanted to make them automatically load which we'll go over in future videos so the last thing to point out is the command window so if you don't have it you want to go to view and command window that brings up this right here this here shows you when it first opens all of the tickle scripts it loads from that folder I just showed you. To clear this, you do CLS enter. So this is kind of like an immediate window. You can type tickle script code directly in here and it'll execute it when you hit enter. So the first thing we can do is show the tickle version by typing puts, which is how you output stuff. And the dollar sign is a variable and we can put TCL version and that shows us we're using 8.6 so that should be the current built-in version of tickle one thing you can do in the command window is select a part and change its value so to select it you type find parts and then the reference designator so let's change r10 and then you put true and that selects r10 now to change its value, you actually do set property, and we're going to change the value property. Let's make it 20k. So, see that changed it to 20k. You can also put multiple commands on one line by separating them with a semicolon. So, we could do both of them at the same time, like this, change it to 10k. So, that's useful for creating spreadsheets uh, if you want to organize your parts and copy and paste from the spreadsheet these formulas to change all the parts but we'll go over that in future videos so the last thing i was going to show you is that they had this thing called the orcad marketplace apps on orcad.com where you could download plugins but all my links to it now just go here to orcad.com and it looks like it's kind of disappeared so it's probably buried somewhere they keep moving stuff around and <laughs> losing the links so if you guys find it post a link in the comments so I think I made another pretty long video, so we better end it here. But if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down and see you next time.